Hey, my pen name is Brian Knox. I'm the author of dating and relationship books for women. And in this video, I want to share an important relationship secret with you. I don't know if you know the actor Rob Lowe, but Rob Lowe has been married for almost 30 years right now. And that's like an eternity in Hollywood. And when asked in men's journal what the secret to his marriage was, guess what he said? Casting. I thought that was a great answer, because when a movie has a great story, a great script, but bad casting and those bad actors, then you probably will not be enjoying that movie. It's like trying to prepare your favorite meal with bad ingredients. It will not taste like it should. So if we want a great long-term romantic relationship, then the casting and the ingredients will matter more than anything else. You can be the smartest, the sweetest, the prettiest, the most charming, even the most attractive woman in the universe. If you cast and pick the wrong man to be in a relationship with, then you will feel nothing but frustrations from the first date until the end of that relationship. And that is because we cannot make a good movie with bad actors or a great meal with bad ingredients, however hard we try. So evidently, we cannot have a great romantic relationship with the wrong partner. Sounds really simple, but there's a tricky trap hidden beneath all of this. When you start watching a movie, it's probably only going to take you five seconds to know that a certain person really can't act and that the rest of that movie will not be entertaining. Well, we usually already know after only a couple of dates whether we have a chance of having a real and a happy future with someone or not. But the question is, how hard will we try to ignore it when the answer is negative? When we know deep down that we are giving that important role to the wrong person? Because we suffer from a mind game then. When we are in love, we humans are generally very blind. All of us. A scientific study done in 2004 by Andreas Bartels using neuroimaging, so brain scans, has found that the analytical part of our brain, that's the part that judges the intentions of another person, meaning you're good for me, no, you are really bad for me, that very important part partially shuts down when the hormones of love, like oxytocin, flood our brain. I'll repeat, it partially shuts down. <laughs> Obviously, no good can ever come from this, and many other studies came to the same conclusions. I'm sure you have felt this. When we fall for someone, when we are in love, then we value them more than perhaps we should. In other words, we put them on a pedestal. If you do that too, it's totally natural. Yet, the deadly poison arsenic is natural as well. So this doesn't mean that it's a good thing, of course. That blindness in love and relationships makes the casting of the right person even more difficult than it already is. It's like I say in another video, bad people are usually not followed around by a swarm of flies marking them as, this is a bad person, so we tend to miss it at first. But even when we do see it, then as a woman, you may get thoughts like, I'm really unhappy in this relationship, I know that, but I love him, so I want to continue with him because I may never ever find a guy like him ever again. And that would be bad news. Really? Because that's actually good news. If the guy you are dating is not treating you well, if you're unhappy in a relationship with him, it's best to never ever find a guy like him ever again, obviously. But your mind may not see it that way. If I look at my own past, then there were two instances where I was really sad and where I had thoughts like, I'll never find a girl like her ever again. And even though I was really sad then, now looking back at those women and those relationships, I can smile because I was about as compatible with those women as a pigeon and a shark. In other words, we were not a great match, but I couldn't see it at the time because I too was blinded by love. So I think we need to wake up and we should listen more often to our gut because our gut will often tell us whether someone is right for us or very wrong. And it does so pretty soon. Sometimes it only takes one date. So as soon as you decide he's not right for you, be gone and never look back. Because dating and relationships are like a lottery. We have to play often in order to win. If you want to pick the right numbers, you will have to play often. It's the price we have to pay, but we only have to win once. So in order to cast somebody we are truly compatible with, we will have to organize a lot of auditions, a lot of castings. We will have to go through a lot of failed relationships first, and that won't be fun, but it's the price we have to pay. 
because everything we want in life is on the other side of some kind of effort, some kind of pain. But the pure joy of being genuinely loved is on the other side of that effort, of that pain, of those failed relationships as well. So if you ask me, it may be worth the agony that we have to go through first. But there's another interesting fact related to all of this. Men are giving you their best behavior in the early stages of a relationship. Because if they are in love with you, they will be putting you up on a pedestal as well, of course. They suffer from the same shutdown in their brain like you do. So, if a guy doesn't treat you well, especially in the beginning of a relationship, then he's not in love. Or, and that's actually much worse, he is in love with you and what you're experiencing and getting right now is the best he has to offer, given that he's so much in love with you. So, from that moment on, it will only get worse. If it is already bad then, then you do not want to know what's coming next. So my advice, run like as if you are chased by a flock of angry rattlesnakes. Every single day, I get emails from women who tell me, I know that I deserve so much better because he's not treating me well, but I love him, so I want to fix this because I think he may be the right guy for me. I usually beg to differ and I don't blame them. They're just blind. They're not seeing it because they're so much in love, but their gut is awake. That's the part of them that's sending me the email, by the way. So I think we should listen more often to our gut. It's an ancient part of us that is meant to guide us in life. And it can be wrong, but when it keeps repeating the same message over and over and over again, then it may be time to listen. And what it's telling us here is that it is time for another round of castings. Like I said, we only have to find one person. So make sure that the word next is in your dictionary of love and don't be afraid to use it whenever it's necessary because every next actually brings you closer to the right guy. I believe that there are probably thousands of people out there on the planet for each and every single one of us where when we're in a relationship with them, the movie of our love life will not only look great, it will feel great. Our gut will be silent most of the time because we're enjoying genuine love coming from a great partner thanks to the many auditions we have organized. So my message in this video is that it may be worth to keep casting until you have found the right actor for the movie of your life because it's the most important role you will ever hand out to anyone. I hope you've loved the message of this video. It's an important one, I think. I've loved making the video for you, as always. And if you want to find more videos that I do not post over here, come on over to briannox.com. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.